while you were out there living homeless, laying on that concrete, you got in touch with your inner voice. You got in touch with that thing on the inside. Can you speak to our audience? Because somebody right now is going through a storm. Somebody right this second thinks that this is the end of the road. The life that I am living in right now it's going to be the life that I experience for the rest of my days. And that just isn't true. So can you speak to the importance of being quiet, getting still? In your case, you didn't have shelter. So I got to imagine it was noise all around you. But still, even with your environment being noisy, you came to a quiet place and you tap to the inner, that inner voice and you heard it and you listen. Can you speak to that? Yes, absolutely, Sean. It's, um, I honestly believe with all of my heart, with sh without any shadow of a doubt, that any human being out there can be in touch with that voice and they can change their circumstances, regardless who you are, regardless what background you are, regardless uh, what stages in your life you are. Why? Because we have a, an intelligence within us that we yet are to understand, okay? We're beginning to understand what drives us, you know, how this miracle, the body that we have, this, I would say, a cover that we, our soul uses into this experience of life. But, you know, even if you don't have any resources, even if you lost everything in your life, even if you are the lowest of the lowest, nobody can take away from you the, what's inside of you. Nobody, absolutely nobody. Uh, so it is, I would say, for anybody out there who's struggling at the moment, okay, you can sit down whatever space you are and just close your eyes. And with closing your eyes, if you find it difficult to meditate, what you could do is take a visual or take an image or take a word. You don't have to know Sanskrit or know Indian uh, uh, mantras or mm -hmm. other mantras that other people. Mantra could be just a simple word that something means to you. And pay attention to your breath. And then as you learn to understand how the breath works, breath is literally the force that if we take the breath, we are, we are emotionless, you know? Uh, the soul and the body go together. So the soul is that breath every day you're taking. It's, you don't even have to think to breathe. So if you start breathing and you start breathing deeply and you focus your entire being in your breath, you'll come, uh, start to raise your awareness of that intelligence within you and you start coming to that silence that literally knows what your next step is. How, how, how do someone recognize that? You know, say myself, I'm listening to you. I want to believe you. I trust you, you. You are this global life coach. So obviously, you know what you're speaking of. But for somebody like me, who's a novice, somebody who's going to listen to this in podcast form, maybe watch the video. How do we know when that voice is not just something we conjured up in our own head or it is actually you have tapped into a consciousness that is deeper and it is speaking back to you and it is telling you the right way to go or providing you direction? How do we know when we've arrived at that place? There's uh, two different things in that, Sean. One is our mind speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you're saying. How do we know that stuff? Which Correct. is all the noises in our head. Okay, and this is, and then the other part is what I call the true intuition. And true intuition only surfaces when the mind is silent. So you so, don't have to think anything, but you simply know. And when I say to you, no, I want you to repeat that word, no, and you will hear a, res a resonation in your heart, in your chest. So no. a knowing, it's something your soul gives you a message. It's like a, what I call it in my first book, A Path to Wisdom, I wrote a song about it. 
a call for love. And a call for love, it's your soul's call to you to love yourself, to love your soul, to love God. And the mind, for instance, how do we know? We are intelligent beings. If I take any person, okay, and I brought them, let's say, to uh, at, at, the, at, at the top of a 22-story building, and I said, jump. They're not going to jump. Correct. How do they know? Okay. <laughs> so they know that their life will uh, simply uh, be gone. Our body is intelligent body. So we know intuitively when something feels good and when something does not feel good. The problem is we ignore that voice. You know, it's the same in a relationship. It's the same with all the leaders I coach around the world. It's the same in the business. When I go into business, if they ask me to, uh, uh, let's say, improve their performance, their productivity, their sales, it does not matter. People are people. Human behavior, emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, it's in every human being at a different levels of awareness. Now, all I have to do is to find out where they are and then give them a roadmap. And, but that knowing, it's something that every human being has it at that level of awareness they find themselves in that moment because your knowing will consistently change. So will your awareness. You know, nature changes every second. Cool. And we expect ourselves not to be like nature, yet we say ourselves we are nature. But then we deny the changes, when especially changes that are destructive. You know, when people say to me, I want to save nature, I said, great, let me put you at the crater of a volcano. Let's see whether nature is going to save you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so we try to be counterintuitive, you know, and we catch ourselves saying things but not doing things which are in alignment with nature, in alignment with everything that created us. We tend to love the good things but disown the bad things. And this is the biggest problem and this is the biggest illusion and something I'm writing about in all of my books, especially in the fourth book I just finished, which is The Unpeakable Code, giving humanity a unique code to consistently upgrade their psychology, their emotional a body, physical body, spirituality, wealth, business, and bring all of that into equilibrium so they can go out there and literally deliver their soul's calling why they're here, what they're here to do. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.